It's no secret that my favorite program to use to create digital products to sell online is Canva. Canva is an amazing graphic design tool that you can use completely for free to create digital products. Anything from Canva templates for social media designs, to eBooks, to guides, to digital end products like printable wall art, business assets, and so much more. I will say though, the fact that Canva has so many features available to users can be pretty overwhelming in the beginning if you're just getting started with it. So in this video, I'm talking talking about how to use Canva to create digital products to sell online and giving you my pick for the top five techniques you can use while designing in Canva to make products that are gonna sell like crazy. So we're gonna hop into Canva and I'm gonna show you these five different features in just a minute, but I did wanna let you know if you're not familiar with Canva, Canva does have a free plan and a paid pro plan. You can do a ton of stuff on Canva free, but there are also some additional premium features if you are a pro subscriber. So a couple of these techniques I'm gonna be talking about are available to everyone with the free plan and a couple are only available to pro users. After watching through the different techniques, you can decide which one might be best for you. And if you decide you'd like to sign up for Canva, I do have a free 30 day pro trial linked in the description box below. That'll let you use all of the premium and pro features for free for 30 days to see if you like it. All right, let's hop into the Canva editor. Okay, I've come into the Canva editor by just creating a new project and this is what my workspace looks like. And if I look over on the left, I can see where I can add all different kinds of things from elements to text. So we're gonna make use of this left-hand side menu and dive into the first of the techniques that I love to use in Canva and that is making use of shadows. One of the features that you can do with both text and different visual elements is add a shadow to it and edit the shadow itself. So we're here on the text bar. Let's go ahead and click to add a text heading. And I'm just gonna type in my name here for a test. I'm gonna make this a little bit larger so we can see it better. Now I'm gonna change this to one of my brand colors and then I'm gonna experiment with the shadow. So if I come up here to where it says effects, I can click on shadow and we can see it automatically has added a shadow layer underneath my text. Now I can do a lot of different things with this shadow. I can use this offset slider, which means if I drag it to the right, it's bringing the shadow layer further away from the original text. And if I drag it to the left, it's bringing it closer. I can decide what direction I want that shadow pointing. I can make the shadow more blurry or more crisp, and I can make the shadow more or less transparent. So that'll be either more solid or more see-through. I can also change the color completely of the shadow if I want the shadow to be a different color. There's also this lift effect with text, which is similar to a shadow, but it just adds a really subtle blurry shadow underneath. It's not drastic at all. It's just enough to make it appear as if it's lifted up off the page and make it pop off the page a little bit more. If you know anything about graphic design, you know one of the main concepts is to cause contrast or signals of separation to make things stand out more and be more noticeable. So that's exactly what adding a shadow or the lift effect helps helps do with text and with visual images. So if we come to our elements tab, we might want to add a photo. So let's look up a beach photo. Let's say I like this one, then I can come up here to edit photo. And again, under the effects tab, I see shadows. Now this is giving me the option for a few different types of shadow, glow, drop, and outline. I tend to like to use the drop shadow, which puts it underneath and slightly offset to the side. And again, I can change the size of the shadow, how blurry it appears the angle it's coming off of the photo, the distance from the photo itself, closer or further away, the color of the shadow, and the intensity, which means how dark or how light the shadow is. So we can see at the very darkest how much this makes this photo pop off the page. Now this doesn't look super natural. Most times I opt to go for something a little more natural. So I might bring down the intensity a bit, maybe even change the color to a lighter gray but I love playing around with these effects to make that shadow look exactly like what I want it to. Again, with the photo or any visual element, it just helps it pop off the page and it also gives it a realistic effect and makes it seem like it's actually a physical, tangible item that's on this page instead of just a picture or a design. This is great also for mock-up images for digital product seller. You really can't go wrong with adding a shadow. All right, moving on to technique number two, which is a pro only feature and that is the background remover. The background 
Crown Remover is one of my absolute favorite, if not my favorite tool on Canva because it's just so useful. So let me show you how this works. If you find a photo that you want to use, let's say the subject of the photo in a design, but you don't necessarily like the background, you can select the photo, click edit photo, and click on the background remover tool. It automatically takes out the background, but leaves the subject that's in the foreground. This gives it a transparent background, meaning that you can now layer this subject on top of something else. So let's say I wanted to make this background color one of my brand colors. I could go ahead and put that on there. And then going back to our shadow effect, I can click to give this pumpkin a drop shadow underneath and change the settings a little bit to make it look more natural, but enough to help it just pop off the page there. So that is what the combination of the background remover and the shadow tools can do. All right, we're about to move on to technique number three, but I wanna let you know that I have a free gift for you today. If you're interested in starting a digital products business where you create and sell these types of digital products online, I have a whole list of over a hundred digital products ideas for you. So if you're just stuck and you know you'd like to try this type of business, but you're not really sure what type of digital product you might make, definitely grab this free list. It'll get your inspiration going, give you some sparks and ideas for what you might be able to create and sell online to make profit and get your digital products business going today. That free list of ideas is in the description box below, as well as my digital product starter guide. So if you just feel a little bit confused about things like sizing, file types, resolution, all of the tech side of creating and selling digital products. And I've got you covered with this starter guide. It'll give you all the basics, need to know information for getting started with your business with creating and selling digital products online. So that also is linked in the description box. You can grab both of those for free after watching this video. All right, technique number three is making use of the combination of layering and transparency. So let's go back to our beach photo here. Let's click to make this our whole background so that this photo takes up the whole canvas space. And this is now our background. What we can do with layering and transparency transparency is we can actually come to the elements and pick a shape that we like. Let's say a circle for now. We can size this to be the right size and drag it to the middle here. And then we can even change the color of the circle. Now what we're gonna do when we have this element of the circle selected is we're gonna come up here to the transparency box. This is the little checkered symbol box. And this brings up a transparency slider. So remember transparency means how see-through that element is. So on the circle, if we drag this to be more transparent, we can see how the circle is becoming more and more see-through. It still keeps the original color, but it just becomes a little more see-through so we can see through the circle to the background photo. Similarly, if we drag it back to the right, it becomes more and more solid. So we might choose somewhere in the middle where it's slightly transparent, but it still holds the color pretty well. And then we can layer this with some text on top. So we can add some text to say whatever we'd like. Let's say it's for a sale graphic. We can say 50% off sale. We're gonna drag this to the center as well make this font whatever color we'd like to contrast our pink circle and still go with the background. Now, if we can't find quite the right color, we can come up here to our plus icon on the document colors and use our color selection tool, which is this little dropper, hover over one of the colors in the background photo that we'd like to use, let's say this blue color, and it automatically matches the color of our text with that color in the background photo to make sure the whole thing appears super cohesive and like it goes together well. We can even go the extra mile, click our text and add the shadow effect to our text, right? Or the lift effect which makes it pop off of that layer underneath even more. So this is just a quick way to add some layers to our design and make use of transparency by making one of our bottom layers more transparent. One other thing we can do with transparency is let's say we have this background photo, but we want it to have somewhat of a different color tint on top. Again, we can come to elements. We can add a square element, change the color to be what we'd like. Then we can size it up to cover the entire image. Now, when we have this square selected and we come up to transparency, Transparency, we can make it more transparent so that we can see the background image through that transparent square. But now it's giving it a little bit of a colored tint on top so that we could again add some text or something to layer on top of this and make it stand out with more of a contrast. You can see the difference if I drag my square off and then if I bring it back on, this is what the final background would look like. And I could then add my layer on top. All right, moving on to feature number four within Canva that I love to use for creating digital products is the frame section. So if we come over again to the elements tab, we can scroll down to where it says frames. We can click to see all frames and you'll see there's a lot of different fun shapes here. And basically what a frame is, is when I put this onto my workspace, I can then click to drag a photo onto my frame and it automatically fits that photo inside the frame, making it the shape that the frame was. So if I want something to 
be circle shaped or scallop shaped or rectangle. I can choose any of these shapes. There are so many fun ones, including these little squiggle designs and there are even letter shapes. So if I wanted to do something in my letter, I could bring on the K shaped frame and bring my photo right into it that way. So it's in the shape of a K. One really fun one are these device mock-up frames. So this one looks like a computer. If I want something to appear as if it's inside of a computer screen, I can do that as well by dragging this in there. And now it looks like it is on a computer. All right. And the fifth fun thing I love to do in Canva when creating digital products is to come to this design tab and to use the style section. What this is, is a grouping of suggestions for color palettes and font sets from Canva based on what they think work well together. So if I click on a font set, I'll see some different suggestions for different types of fonts. So I can see if I click on this, it tells me what font it is up here and it'll make a suggestion for different fonts that work well in a grouping together. Similarly, if I see the color palette suggestion area, I can click on one of these color palettes and it'll automatically put one of the colors as the background. I can continue clicking on it to see the different combinations of the background color and a different font color and see what works well together. Now, the really fun part about this is if I have Canva Pro, I can have a brand kit, which is basically where I have input my own brand fonts and color palette here into my own kit. So what I can do is if I already have a design that I'm working on, but I don't really like the colors and I want it to match my brand colors, I can come over to my own personal brand kit that I've made, click on my color palette, and it automatically changes the colors in this design with my icon and everything to fit my color palette. Now I can keep clicking on color palette and it'll keep going through my different brand colors, pairing different colors together so I can see different combinations of the colors within my design. I can click on my brand fonts as well to see that in action on my design. So this is just a really fun way to create a design and instantly make it on brand for your brand kit to make sure that whatever you're creating is cohesive and feels right for the purpose you have for it. So I think you'll find that using any or all of these different techniques will quickly up level and improve the quality of your digital products that you're selling online and give them a much more professional and aesthetically pleasing appearance. Don't forget to click the link in the description box below to grab your free digital product starter guide, as well as your free list of over a hundred different digital product ideas so that you can get started on the right foot with your digital products business. Now, if you're interested in a full beginner's Canva tutorial, I also have that on my channel. You can click or tap on the square on the screen right now, and that'll take you over to watch that beginner's Canva tutorial where I walk through the basics of starting on Canva. Talk soon, friends.